Do you find it difficult to uh, find inspiration to paint? Or maybe due to the current lockdown, like me, find it difficult to find a subject that you like to paint? Well, today we're going to look at, we're going to learn to paint watercolour. And this can be found without travelling or leaving home or going abroad or holiday. So this is a scene that I'm going to be um, painting. And it's actually... Just a few minute walk from where I live, uh, we went for a walk, me and my son, and these uh, I took some pictures of uh, the walk itself. So you don't have to go far, you don't have to look. Um, it can be right under our noses if you're um, wanting to find something to paint. So my materials I'm using today, I'm using the uh, Bockingford Cold Press, £140, and it's size 15 by 11 And you can actually see my palettes. I've uh, set up the shot so that you can see just about some of my paint mix mixing just off the right hand side of the screen. And I'm actually using my Jackson's watercolour paints and also I'm using my Winsor & Newton uh, watercolours as well. So a bit of a mix and match, I'm using both paints. Um, there's really no reason why I'm doing this um, other than my ceramic palette which you can see on the left, on the the, the closest one to us. Um, I actually broke that and so I really want to use the paints that are in that. I'm debating whether to keep that, I don't know, maybe I should just keep it and keep refilling it and just use it in the studio, um, but I just wanted to use that as well as my Windsor & Newton. So if you do like this sort of painting, if you're looking to improve um, watercolour or learn more techniques, then feel free to subscribe to my channel and I would appreciate if you give me a thumbs up, give me a like. And also any comments are also welcome to my channel. So just, just going in loosely, I'm not really taking my time. It's a simple sketch. And like I said before, I'm not looking for an exact replica of the photograph. It's just really what I want to include in that. So the tree in the foreground that I'm doing now is going to be slightly different and I'm just just simplifying the scene. So if you do, if you are looking into simplify your painting, then that's what I like to cover on my uh, channel. Um, I've got plenty of videos for beginners and um, how to simplify watercolor. So just just adding some more darks. The tree. I want these trees to be quite dark. Um, quite a lot of shadow in them. Um, it's quite a sunny, a nice sun, sunny day, so um, there is uh, quite a bit of shadow, nice contrast in the scene, and I might exa um, exaggerate that slightly. Um, obviously, using your artistic license, you can sort of do um, what you want. Anything to improve the composition, so you can either change a colour or tone or add things or take things out. So I'm just going to play around with this um, this scene and um, hopefully I'll do it justice.
You can see here I've uh, switched to the rigger. This is a size 2 uh, rigger brush. If you don't have a rigger or a liner brush, um, I would recommend getting one. Um, really, really useful for trees and limbs. You can see how I'm holding the brush, allowing the sort of lines to um, start off thick and then as they go higher up they sort of taper off. So you just um, you start off by pressing and then release the pressure and that gives you a tapered line. So it's ideal for branches and this is I'm um, switch switch back now. Um, definitely couldn't get the same result from this sort of brush that I'm using here. This is a small squirrel mop brush. Um, so there's many times where I've tried to paint a tree and I've used this this brush in particular and it just doesn't work. You get these um, unwanted um, wide sort of lines. So I would recommend getting a liner brush if you haven't already got one and that's perfect for trees. As the weather gets a bit nicer here in the UK, I'm hoping to get out and do some plein air painting. I'm just, just trying to, just waiting for it to just get a little bit warmer, and then uh, just take my stool and take some watercolors and my uh, sort of stuff to get out and sketch outdoors. It's been quite some time since I've sketched outdoors, but it's something I think that I need to do more of and start again so obviously with the current sort of lockdown restrictions and things like that I think things are starting to ease and hopefully by this summer time then I'll be uh, off out and doing some more sketching I've been really concentrating on doing some uh, work in my sketchbooks if you uh, 
if you if you're into your sketchbox and and do like to use sketchbox and drop a comment let me know what sketchbooks you use i use uh mostly the stillman and burn i've got a big um sort of a a4 size i think it's a hard hard bound and it's the actual let me just see if i can get it the actual it's the alpha series which is quite a nice thick paper so i've been working quite a lot in my sketchbook and just trying to do something every day so i think i will i will make a video and i will um show you what i've been doing in my sketchbook as soon as i've done uh, quite a bit more um so that's something that i will share with you as soon as i've done some more paintings in that and i think the the benefits of using a sketchbook is you don't have to be serious you don't have to make any sort of masterpieces or anything like that it's just something that you can use as a sort of visual journal um so it's quite nice and i think if you do use a sketchbook then i would recommend uh, writing the date down any impressions any thoughts anything that you like about the painting or whatever you're painting into your or whatever you're drawing or sketching in your sketchbook then always do keep notes because it's easy to forget sort of um where the places are and things like that So just adding a few uh, trees and um, other things that aren't in the reference. Um, I just feel that it needs a few more trees coming through uh, from the back of the house. And just just add more sort of interest, more detail. And let's add some more lines to the roof. Bring that... Um, a bit more attention and then I'm, I'm adding this sort of grass um, at the bottom of the scene and then also I'm just adding some imperial purple this is uh, Daniel Smith's imperial purple there was some flowers at the bottom of the tree uh, I don't know whether they were sort of almost like bluebells I'm not sure uh, some sort of purple flower if you do know what that flower is then drop us a comment let me know what these flowers are but the daniel smith it's quite um the color that i wanted i don't have any colors like that so i did use my dot card that daniel smith sent me um so i was using that for these flowers at the bottom so you can see um i'm using the rigor brush again the liner brush and um, I'm using this more and more. I quite like the way, um, quite descriptive, the line work from the liner brush. So it gives a nice um, look to the painting. I know it's ideal for, um, for branches and twigs and things like that. But I do find it, it, it does make quite nice lines and, and things within the sort of painting itself um, you can see I've switched now to my pens these are my um, ink pens and I'm just tightening up slightly the um, the work that I've done tightening up um, sort of the looseness of it so I just wanted to put a bit more definition on the windows um, I think maybe I could have spent a bit more time doing this um, made a better job but it is a just a, an overall impression of the scene. So I'm just going over now and tightening that up just slightly, making a bit neater the paint that I've done. And I'm coming close to um, finishing this painting. Just a few details here and there, really, that I've got to do. So, yeah, if you do like this video, if you do enjoy, if, you, if you've enjoyed watching this video, then please do give us a like, give us a thumbs up. I do appreciate that. It does help my channel. And any, con any comments, anything you, you think, 
any suggestions, anything like that, then you're always welcome to leave a comment in the comment section. Um, I do appreciate all the comments that I get. So just defining some of the edges, like the um, bottom of the roof, just strengthening that line. And I do have a few sizes in these pens. They come in packs, so I do like to use the 0.2 and the, that's probably the small, I find the uh, 0 0.05, I think it's millimeters. It's quite scratchy on the paper and it's hard to get a line from it. Uh, there's not much of a nib on the end, so I do like to use the 0.2 as the smallest. And then all the way up to, I've got a brush pen in a different pack, it's a um, pit. The pit, pit pens, artist pit pens, whatever they're called, P I T T. Um, so I do have a pack of those, and it's got a brush pen in, which I quite like to use as well. So you can see, I'm, I'm just adding the darker tone to the tree, giving that a bit more shadow. And also, another thing to take note of is uh, trees. They, they have the branches on the 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 back end of the tree and the forward side and so there's different tones within the branches you don't want them all sort of one shade so some are in the light and some are in the shadow and so it just gives a bit of three dimension three dimensionalness to the uh, tree so that's what I was doing there and then just a few um, details a few darker tones to these uh, this sort of fence you can see in the uh, foreground. I just found the red on the doors a bit too, uh, they just need darkening a bit and just setting back a bit. They looked a bit washed out, so just add in some of that. And then a few touches here and there to the roof, give it a bit more definition, a bit more character. And I think the best, the good thing about doing these sort of paintings, these um, old sort of cottages, anything like that, they're quite forgiving. It's not perfect. Yeah, even the lines, if you're not very good with lines, you can't get a straight line, then it doesn't matter because these are old buildings and a lot of times you don't have perfectly straight lines in the building itself. So that's perfect, especially for me because um, I don't always get a straight line. And so this is perfect for me. So just my favourite part of the painting is taking the masking tape off and get that nice crisp clean edge and I've put my signature in the bottom corner and there we go. I hope you like this, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you learned something new um, and that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye bye.